Howler monkeys. Okay, I don't know what that is. Hi, I'm Josh and this is The Camera Project. I'm in South Mountain Reservation in South Orange, New Jersey to do some waterfall photography and review the Oban CT3586 five section carbon fiber tripod, which comes with a triple action ball head, the BZ226T. South Mountain Reservation is a nature preserve in northeastern New Jersey. It was carved out of natural wilderness in the late 1800s and designed by the Olmsted brothers, designers of famous works such as the roadways in Acadia and Great Smoky Mountains National Parks and college campuses like Washington University in St. Louis. We're here today to check out Hemlock Falls and some of the other smaller falls in the area and to give our tripod some proper testing. I have Hobble Falls right behind me, so let's get shooting. A quick note. As in many of my reviews, Oban did provide me with this tripod to review, but they did not pay for this review, nor did they have any say in what I'm gonna say or my thoughts on this tripod. So let's get right down to some of the basic form factor and stats on this tripod to help you know if it's even something you're interested in checking out. I'd call this a travel tripod because of its relatively lightweight, its reverse folding legs and the 16.6 .6 inch length when it's folded, which makes it pretty compact to take with you. As you see, it will fit in the side pocket of my Peak Design Everyday Backpack, though it's definitely just about the limit of that as it is slightly taller than the bag itself. As I mentioned, this is a carbon fiber version, but it also comes in aluminum. At the time I'm filming this, they're 270 and 180 respectively, Though I have seen them on sale, the biggest benefit to the carbon fiber is the four pound weight instead of the four and a half pound on the aluminum version. And of course, people argue that carbon fiber is stronger and will better dampen vibrations. Now, it has a five section telescoping leg with twist locks, which means that it makes it very quick to get it open and closed. But conversely, there's no visual indication if the legs are locked or not, like you get on a flip lock. So I can't decide which I like better. I do own both. And I lean towards saying that on smaller, more travel tripod form factor, I tend to like the twist locks better as they are quicker. But in um, a more heavy duty tripod, I think I prefer the flip locks. Now I'd probably prefer a three or four section leg, but the five section helps keep the collapse height at that 16.6 .6 inches and allows for the full 62 and a half inches at full height with the sender column up, which is about at my eye level. For a relatively lightweight tripod, it has a respectable load of 27 pounds. Now I haven't remotely tested the weight limit because I don't have any big lenses for my full frame Sony kit. My kit today weighs probably about three pounds, though that said, I often put a five inch monitor on top of my camera, which would add maybe another pound or two with the batteries. The plate is Arca Swiss compatible, which is nice. I can always use my included head or a head for one of my other tripods or a head for something like this Peak Design capture clip, which lets me just clip my camera to my bag while I'm walking. And then I could go straight onto the tripod because it's sort of a universal standard. So let's take this out and see how quick it is with these twist locks. Okay, so I'm here at the waterfall and I have an ND400 filter on the front, which is probably overkill for what I'm looking for. So we're gonna try it without the ND filter as well. But right now I have the ND filter on there and just to test some stability on the tripod, I have a 10 second exposure going. Now, it's probably too much for this waterfall. It'll probably just look like a white mess, but let's give it a try. I'm gonna do a remote shutter so I don't have to actually press the shutter button. It's actually kind of nice. I'm gonna do a few more like this. I'll adjust the position. I'll get one slightly uh, overexposed maybe to get the detail in the rocks. Now, another thing I should say about this tripod is that there is an included short center column. So you would change out the center column and it wouldn't protrude past the bottom. Then I could sprawl out the legs as far as they go. There are three locking positions on these legs and I could go super wide on these legs. The 
height of the tripod itself will be only 8.5 inches or so off the ground. Here's a 20 second exposure, which I'm doing really just in case I want some extra detail on those rocks. Let's talk about a few other value adds on this tripod. The tripod itself comes with a carrying bag and it comes with a nice shoulder strap for that carrying bag. Now I didn't bring it with me today because I prefer just to carry it on my bag itself. It's one less thing to carry, but the fact that it comes with it is nice. If I were to be packing it in luggage or something like that, I would put it inside the carry bag, inside the luggage, and then when I went out for the day, I'd put it in the backpack. Now, another thing it has, it has a little notch right here, and that notch is for an optional, it does not come with it, but an optional strap if you just want a strap for the tripod itself. So now I'm at Hemlock Falls, which is sort of the major waterfall attraction here at South Mountain Reservation. I'm gonna do a little exploring and try to figure out what my right angle for the shot is, or a shot, and uh, make some shots here. Okay, so let's talk about another cool feature on the Oban tripod. And right now I'm in sort of a rocky, muddy terrain. It's definitely very wet. And one nice thing to have is these built-in spikes on the legs. Basically, you can just wind them down or wind them up just to give something to dig into sort of this uneven ground. All right. Now the knobs are very tactile, especially the main big ball head release knob. So it has that, it has the pan knob, which I'm not gonna be using right now, but it also has the tension knob for the ball head itself. So it's sort of an extra security, but it also just helps give you different levels of tension for the ball head. I do find I don't need to mess with that one too much. I could just use this really nice big tactile ball head release knob and it's super strong and I have not noticed any creep or anything like that on this ball head. I'm only doing a third of a second now. I don't think I need much more. The water's moving pretty quickly. I shouldn't need too much slower than that. I'm gonna move over. There's some nice ice features over there. Let's try to capture that. Okay, so technically speaking, they say that you should not get this tripod in salt water. And if you do get it wet, dry it out thoroughly. So fresh water should be okay. Always make sure that the bottom leg segment is fully extended when you're putting it in water so that it's not getting into the joints. So I am gonna be putting in some water here. I'm gonna try not to go too deep because my boots aren't waterproof too deep either. And here is the flaw in a twist lock. Sometimes think it's locked and it's not. But the major benefit of a ball head. Don't have to worry if my legs are even, I can just basically even out the head and keep shooting. I should mention that there are two bubble levers on the heads themselves. One on the locking knob for the quick release plate and another on the head itself, although the camera does cover it the way I have the camera positioned right now. Okay, another nice thing about a ball head is that you can change to a different orientation. So now I'm gonna change to a portrait orientation really quickly here. Okay, another really nice feature on this tripod is that one of the legs can turn into a monopod. So if you're in a place that doesn't allow tripods, you could keep it in your bag and turn this same thing into a monopod. Now, let me just show you the process. There's this one leg that unlocks. And you simply unscrew it. Okay, now I'm just gonna take it off frame so I don't have to put it down in the water. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm just gonna loosen the center column support here. And then I can simply unscrew the base plate now the base plate's another thing I didn't mention. It does have a hook. So if you want to hook your bag there for some extra weight on the tripod, you can do that as well. So I'll unscrew this base plate, which will allow me to remove the center column. Very simple. Okay, 
put this in my pocket. Okay, and now all I have to do is screw the center column onto the leg. Now I don't have to do this with the center column. If I'm okay with a shorter monopod, I could just screw the ball head right onto here. Same thing with the uh, short center column. I could screw that onto here if that's what I had on the tripod at the time. And now I have a nice monopod. Let's just put it to use. Lock this down. And there you go. And I could just level out my ball head and start shooting. All right, so it's time to pack this guy in for the day. There's a few things you're gonna wanna know. One, because of the reverse folding legs, you want your center column to be up. So you just make sure that collar is loose. Mine already is, because I just turned this into a monopod. Then you tighten it up, okay? Okay, so then, because of your twist locks, you kind of do each one and then push. I didn't loosen that one quite enough. To fold it up, you just hold that button and flip it up top. Now, something I always find with reverse folding tripods is you kind of have to perfectly align the head sometimes just to make sure that all the legs fold. Mine is pretty good right now and just twist the ball head a little so it's really compact and small and then I can just put it right back in my bag. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the Obin CT3586? Tripods for me are sort of this weird Goldilocks game. You always want something that you trust your gear to and you know that it's gonna support it and the head isn't just gonna cave in or the pan knob isn't constantly getting loose, but you also want something super portable and something lightweight that you're gonna carry with you. Now it's also a price concern. I have constantly gone between super cheap tripods hoping to find one that's just gonna work and Finally, I decided I want to try something a little bit more mid-range. I'm not gonna go out and buy a Gitzo or really right stuff because I'm not the guy out there with 600 millimeter lenses who's constantly using that kind of gear and I just can't justify it. That said, I'm more willing to spend a few hundred dollars for something that I don't need to constantly replace and that I don't always hate, like, well, almost all my other tripods. So that's where this Oven comes in and in fact, I really like it. It does so many different things. If I'm gonna look for a nitpick, I would love it if the center column could come out and do sort of overhead angles, but I don't think that's a feature that really exists in tripods in this category. The one thing it does do is you can actually invert the center column for a super low angle in that way, though I don't think it's quite as versatile as what I just described. I love that you have the short center column for super low to the ground shots. I love that you have the monopod leg. It's just super versatile, and the fact that it'll fit in my backpack makes it a no-brainer to bring with me. I love the thing, and I can't speak to the longevity of it because I've only had it for a few weeks, but so far it's been rock solid. Now, if you're looking for a bit of a cheaper deal, at only a half a pound, the aluminum isn't that much heavier. So going from four, and four pounds on this one to four and a half on that one, it's not the end of the world and I'm sure it'll hold up really well. So in that sort of mid-range tripod, I think it's fantastic. Now there are some competitors. There's the Monfrotto Element, which I have the Monfrotto Element small, and I could say that thing isn't super sturdy, but it's only 12 inches when folded down and it's super lightweight. I don't really trust it right now. It's sort of on an angle and yeah, I'm using that to shoot with and yeah, that was one of the things that I had purchased, hoping to get something super portable, and I don't know if it's quite worked for me. This, on the other hand, I think does. Now, Benro also makes the Travel Angel with very similar specs. The only downsides to the Benro that I've seen spec-wise is that it won't go nearly as low as this one. That said, it is a little bit lighter than this one, so it's all about your trade-offs. I really, really like the Oban, and I would certainly highly recommend it to anyone looking for sort of a portable photo video tripod. Now that's one thing I didn't touch on too much is why a ball head for video. And if I was sort of in studio location, I wouldn't want a ball head for video. But when I'm out here, especially shooting things for myself, by myself, 
I'm not doing a ton of panning and tilting and things like that that you would need a fluid head for, but I am constantly on uneven ground. So the ability to have a ball head and just sort of lock it level and not have to worry about the legs is super helpful because when I go out with my big Monfrotto tripod without a ball head, well, it takes me forever to level the legs and if I can avoid that, I might as well. Anyway, this has been Josh for The Camera Project and if you like this episode, please subscribe and please let me know what kind of videos you wanna see on the channel. Please leave a comment below. See you soon. Hit that subscribe button. Do it. Do it. Come on, do it.